Good morning. Welcome to this week. Complete crisis. We fumbled the rollout. That's on me. President Obama reeling over the disastrous start to his signature achievement. Can Obamacare be fixed? Can his presidency recover, or is this Obama's political Katrina? This morning, our special coverage of presidency in crisis, including a key senator who may have her own eyes on the White House, New York's Kirsten Gillibrand. Plus, ask not what your country can do for you. 50 years later, remembering JFK. All that and the powerhouse roundtable right here this Sunday morning. From ABC News, This Week with George Stephanopoulos starts now. Hello again, I'm Martha Raddatz. Great to have you with us. If second terms are about building a legacy, this was an incredibly tough week for President Obama, who this morning is still facing withering attacks on his signature legislative achievement, health care reform. And most troubling for the White House, Democrats are joining in. We have full coverage of the president's very rough week. Let's begin at the White House, where Jonathan Carl has the very latest. Good morning, John. Good morning, Martha. President Obama has staked his legacy on the Affordable Care Act, but now the flawed rollout threatens to undermine the foundation of his second term. The president came before the cameras this week and fell on his sword. I do make apologies for not having executed better. We did fumble the ball on it. That's something I deeply regret. Six weeks after the bungled rollout of healthcare.gov, the White House revealed that only 106,000 Americans have signed up for Obamacare, a scant 26,000 of those through the federal exchange. If you like your plan... And the president's repeated vow that Americans could keep their health care if they liked it, with millions getting cancellation notices, President Obama acknowledged a broken promise. There is no doubt that the way I uh, put that forward unequivocally ended up not being accurate. But his proposed fix to allow people to keep their plans for one more year has only caused more confusion, with some states rejecting the plan as unworkable. Criticism of the White House has been relentless from Republicans. This disastrous law was destined to fail from the start. And now even Democrats. Some heads out of roll. And a new poll this week for the first time shows a majority of Americans say the president is not honest and trustworthy. Well, president Obama's predicament has prompted comparisons with where President Bush was at this point in his presidency in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. And Brownie, you're doing a heck of a job. President Bush never fully recovered. Obama's top aides reject the comparison, but critics say it comes down to a question of credibility and competence, one that President Obama openly acknowledged. There have been times where I thought we were slapped around a little bit unjustly. This one's deserved, right? It's on us. Republicans, of course, have voted over and over again to either repeal or change Obamacare. But this week we saw something different, Martha. 39 Democrats joined House Republicans in a measure that would fundamentally change the law. And they did that despite the fact that the president had issued a veto threat. Thanks, John. And stay right there. We're going to broaden our conversation with a pair of political gurus, David Pluff, who advised President Obama and is now a contributor to ABC News. Welcome, David. Matthew Dowd, who was a top strategist on the George W. Bush campaign, and our chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, joins us from New York. I want to go back to you first, John. We heard Congressman Rahal say in your piece that heads ought to roll. Is that going to happen? Well, the answer is yes, eventually. What I'm hearing from White House officials is there will be changes to the president's team coming out of all this, but they are not looking to fire anyone now. The president firmly believes that would be counterproductive. He needs these people working on fixing the problems. I mean, you can imagine, Martha, for instance, if there were a change at the top. If Kathleen Sebelius was fired, he would be left with a vacancy at the top of HHS and a long, drawn-out confirmation battle for whoever he would nominate to replace her. Matthew, Dad, let's turn to you. It's 
it sounds like for policy reasons and efficiency reasons, perhaps they shouldn't have any heads rolling right now. But the optics of this are so bad. Well, the problem is, is that there's a trust problem that exists. And sometimes the only way to get back to a place where you can rebuild trust is to bring new people in. To me, the pre this presidency, and actually the last presidency mm. that I was involved with in the elections, <laughs> is they've done great a great job at delegation, but they haven't done a great job on the second half of what an MBA person is supposed to do, which is accountability. And sometimes the only way you can hold people accountable or enforce accountability is to bring new people in when things like hap happen like this, which finally happened, obviously, with Donald Rumsfeld when Secretary Gates came in. I think it's a long time. I think at some point the president needs to demonstrate, yeah, I can delegate things, but I can also hold people accountable when things are messed up. David Clough, is that what you would do? Well, I think right now they're in triage, as Jonathan said. And so I think uh, once the website gets fixed, and it will, you have to step back and say, okay, what do I need to have confidence going forward that I can implement this law, not just in the coming months, but in the coming years? And I think that's the fundamental question is once you've stabilized, how do you give confidence to the American people and to the president himself that you have this under control going forward? Because this law is going to be with us, I think, forever. Uh, and cer But certainly over the next three years of his presidency, uh, we're going to have more people that need to be enrolled. You've got to implement this in a smart, effective way and regains people's trust that this is the right thing to do. So, John Carl, if heads aren't rolling, what will they do? Well, the big thing right now, of course, is getting that website fixed and, Martha, also working with insurance companies. I mean, the president has clashed with insurance companies, but he brought the CEOs in and they have the same goal right now, the exact same goal, which is getting as many people as they possibly can to enroll in these health exchanges. And he does have an ally there with those CEOs. So, Rebecca Jarvis, let's turn to you. Give us a reality check. What are the American people thinking? What impact is on them? Well, the issue here, Martha, is who is signing up through the public exchanges and who is not. Right now, the numbers are skewing much older than the insurers and the government had anticipated. The average age with the number of insurers I'm talking to, 50 years old, when we were expecting people of the age of 40 to start signing up through these exchanges, those who are younger are opting out. And that's a problem for the future years because ultimately, in order for this to work, and you heard it from John, the insurers Insurers need a pool of people that is both young and healthy, as well as the sick and the old. And ultimately, if next year you don't see young people signing up for the exchanges, and right now it doesn't look like they will be, then in 2015, that's when premiums start to go up because the insurers will say, we spent all of this money in 2014 to insure people, and we need to actually pass those costs along to the other people in the next year. So, so this gets right back to the competence question, David and Matthew. What do you see as far as Obama regaining the trust of the American people? Well, well to me, is this is very problematic for the, his presidency at this point in time. If you take a look at history, when presidents in their second term drop to this level on credibility, trust, and approval, they never get back, they never come back from that. It's very hard, absent some major crisis or major situation in this. I think the president is in a difficult spot on all his legislative initiatives going forward in the next three years. He has time, Is but it a political Katrina? Uh, well, I don't think, well, first of all, there's a qualitative difference. I know the comparisons we've made. There's, there's a qualitative there difference. People is. dying in New Orleans yes. and people trying to get health care and not able to get health care. But it is, from a political standpoint, it's eerily similar to President Bush in the fall of 2005, eerily similar. David Clough. I disagree. I think Iraq was going on, which is getting more and more unpopular. The economy was beginning to soften. I, it's hard in these feeding frenzies in Washington to have perspective. But where could we be in four or five months? Hopefully the website is working fine and, and people are enrolling for health care. Hopefully we won't have another bout of Washington dysfunction, which is one of the reasons I think people are upset. It's not just health care. And we pass a budget and we move forward. The economy continues to strengthen. So we could be in a much different place three or four months from now. No doubt this is an enormously challenging time. But I think you do have to have some perspective here that, you know, the, the story could change. And I do think once the website gets fixed, I think the political notion, by the way, that next year's election or 2016, the Republican platform is going to be get ridding, get, getting rid of health care. Millions of people will be signed up. It's an impossibility. I, I I want to go quickly to, to John Carl and Rebecca just for some final thoughts here on John, you first, whether he can regain the trust of the American people. Well, I'll, t I'll tell you this, Martha. The White, White House officials firmly believe that the worst is behind them. But I've got to tell you, that is essentially what they have been telling me for several weeks. And of course, over the course of that time, things kept on getting worse. Rebecca? And from the standpoint of the people, the website has to work. And if premiums do go up in 2015, then there's even bigger problems. Thanks, everyone, for joining us.